Hello everyone, it's Aaron Christensen with Horror 101 with Dr. AC and welcome back to Scarathon 2024, benefiting the Women's Reproductive Rights Assistance Project. Today, we're gonna to be chatting about Studio 666 from 2022, AKA the Foo Fighters horror movie. Uh, basically the premise is we've got the Foo Fighters playing themselves, they're working on their 10th album and they, they're looking for some fresh inspiration. So they go and find this place in Encino where they're going to record their new album. And of course, weird things start happening there. That's the basic premise. I'm a fan of the Foo Fighters. I think Dave's a fun guy. I think he's a great presence and personality. And I think that's the only way you can enter this movie is by having a lot of generosity toward the Foo Fighters. Because as far as the story goes, it's pretty well-trodden territory. They did this back in the late 80s with Rock and Roll Nightmare and Black Roses, the story of a band looking for inspiration and finding evil hiding around the corner in some weird recording studio or far off location where they're recording. That's been done before. This film is based on a story by Dave Grohl. And so it's clear that Dave wanted to make a horror movie. And so here we are making a horror movie because why not? You're a rock star. Why not do what you want to do? As one might guess, this is not a film to be taken seriously. And I think maybe that's one of the issues is that it is very much a comedy horror. And the comedy is not that well executed. The Foo Fighters are not actors and they're certainly not comedians. They're fun, but they're not necessarily funny. And so watching them play these kind of cartoon Scooby-Doo versions of themselves, it has its appeal, but it runs dry after a little while. Let me rattle off our band members just so we got that out of the way. You got Dave Grohl, Nate Mandel, Pat Schmier, Taylor Hawkins, Rami Jaffe, and Chris Shiflett. And of those, Rami Jaffe definitely comes off the best because his character is actually given something to do. I think that's the other thing, is that these characters aren't really characters. We're just watching the Foo Fighters wander around being the Foo Fighters and not very interesting versions of the Foo Fighters. And I certainly hope that that's not how they are in the recording studio, where they basically just all stand around, look at Dave and go, well, what are we going to do? Because that's kind of how it comes off in the movie. And Dave playing a version of himself, I just don't necessarily see Dave in the recording studio like jamming out and swinging his hair around and giving it all he's got. I don't know. Maybe he does, in fact, practice how he plays. Maybe I'm the amateur in this equation. The script is not the sharpest. In fact, the joke they keep referring back to is this magical note that Dave has whipped up called the L sharp. And they keep going back to that as though it's going to get funnier when they say it over and over and over again. Spoiler, it doesn't. So that's the comedy part, which isn't necessarily that funny. Then we get to the horror part. There are these weird kind of CGI specters that are lurking in the woods and lurking in the basement and lurking around corners. And that's not really that scary. The kills, on the other hand, are actually quite well done. Uh, I was surprised the opening uh, where Jenna Ortega has a brief cameo was much harsher than I was expecting. It's the pre-title sequence. And I'm like, oh, I guess they're serious. Then you find out, no, no, they're not. The film is directed by B.J. McDonnell. And I was like, why do I know that name? B.J. McDonnell is the guy who took over the reins from Adam Green for Hatchet 3. Adam Green directed Hatchet, Hatchet 2, and Victor Crowley. But B.J. McDonnell, who was the steady cam operator and who's an amazing camera operator, has been on tons and tons of big shows. He was our director for Hatchet 3. He's also directed a bunch of Slayer videos. And I think this is his second feature after Hatchet 3. But the cliches run hot and heavy. I mean, this whole idea of, you know, a band having lost their inspiration. They can't think anything. There's some infighting. And then they discover a half-finished recording from the previous band that was murdered there. And it kind of possesses Dave. And now he's like an agent of evil. And is evil Dave going to do evil things? But with BJ McDonald at the helm, the murders and the splatter set pieces are actually done quite well. There's a really fun chainsaw sequence. There's some rather gruesome hammer murders. So that part of it's fun. It might be too harsh for your Foo Fighter fans, and it might be too run-of-the-mill for your horror fans. Now, as I mentioned, the Foo Fighters are not actors. However, they have recruited some excellent actors, and every time they come on screen, it's like, 
oh, that's what this movie could actually be. You've got people like Jeff Garland playing their manager. You got Whitney Cummings as the neighbor next door who'd really like to be part of the band. As I mentioned, you've got Jenna Ortega again in a small role, but she's recognizable and she's welcome. And Leslie Grossman plays the realtor. All of these are like genuine actors. And when they come on, you just kind of watch the Foo Fighters shrink by comparison. It would have been nice had there been some extras on this Blu-ray, maybe talking about the genesis of the project, uh, why Dave wanted to do a horror movie, things like that would have actually been welcome. Instead, there's only a gag reel and mostly it's watching the boys mess up their lines. So that is Studio 666. Again, it's harmless. Uh, it's not going to change anybody's life. I don't know that Foo Fighter fans are going to love it. I don't know that horror fans are going to love it. I think it lands in a kind of iffy place where if you're already a horror fan and if you're already a Foo Fighters fan, you might get a kick out of it. But maybe not because, again, it doesn't necessarily show the Foo Fighters as these unsung acting heroes who've just been waiting to break out. I think stick with your day job, boys. And again, this is Scarathon 2024 benefiting the Women's Reproductive Rights Assistance Project. We're in the final days of the fundraiser. Please go to this video right up here that will give you all the information or you can just drop down into the description of this video. You'll find the link to the platform. You make your donation right now. We are so close and we just need your help. Again, no donation is too large or too small and every single dollar makes a difference. Thanks everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic final week of October and we'll see you tomorrow.